Alright, hello and welcome. So, focus dropped on uh, PS4 and I believe Xbox One. So I think it's about time that uh, I kind of go over what I think the best focus abilities or focus trees or what you should pick as your first focus. Um, because that's pretty important. So obviously the, there will there will be spoilers here. Uh, the title should have alerted you to that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just get right to it. So I have unlocked all of the trees. Uh, obviously on PC I've had a little bit of time to do so. Uh, and the first one I picked was Yuniru. That was a mistake. Uh, I don't suggest you pick a Nairu kind of no matter what. It is the worst tree by quite a large margin, but it is the tree that I picked first. Uh, basically, uh, Medusa skin, when you get hit, enemies turn to stone. This is terrible. You should never plan to get hit. 7% uh, bonus armor. I don't care how high that goes. If it's a percentage less than 100%, then this is basically nothing. Pretty much means absolutely nothing. Uh, and Mighty Blows, uh, it doesn't matter how high this goes because this doesn't stack, so you can't completely strip armor off of enemies, so it's useless. Yeah. Uh, so the passives on this tree are awful. Uh, the main ability is fun. Petrifying enemies using this on strong opponents is kind of cool, uh, but not particularly useful. Uh, and uh, Crushing Force, Weight of Justice, like none of these things, like being able to activate it after this much time, none of it really matters that much, and this is with uh, a cooldown thing. Let's take all these abilities off really quick though. You have to click the abilities to activate them, uh, and just go with the base. So at the base you're just going to have regular, just your main ability, uh, and your cooldown is 180 seconds. Using the Mastery, which will appear on all uh, of the trees, we'll reduce that by 15. But, uh, and each level of this will reduce it by 15. But if you add any skill, it goes up by 45. So as you can see, that quickly gets out of hand. And this cooldown is basically doubled. Uh, or it, it's increased by a large margin. Having all of these basically means that you're waiting longer than most missions in the game take in order to be able to activate this. Uh, so for all focuses, you're going to want passives, basically, where you activate this once and then never worry about it again. So we're basically looking for the best passives. Uh, combine that with none of like these abilities being any good. Like The only one down here that could potentially be good is Weight of Justice, which is 2,000 damage a second, which is not even that much realistically. Uh, and other than that, it's... All of these abilities are pretty much useless. Getting Crushing Force is probably also a mistake. Uh, but yeah, that's a Nairu. Nairu is the worst of the bunch by, I think, a fairly large margin. The others are much better, uh, considering that a Nairu is basically useless. Uh, all of the others at least have one purpose or another. Uh, so let's go with the one I've been using the most, or been leveling the most, uh, which is Zenerik. This is the most straightforward tree. Um, basically, uh, the way that you want to do this is you have Void Pulse, uh, and this suspends enemies and uh, whatever. Activating the ability is basically useless, uh, and you're, like, it's fine, but you're never going to use this over using, like, crowd control Warframe powers. Uh, so it's there, it exists if you really need it for something specific. Uh, basically you want to just activate this once to get Energy Overflow. Uh, at max rank, this will replenish 4 energy per second for the entire mission. That's really good. That's better than 4 energy siphons, uh, and it makes a lot of like lower efficiency builds more viable on frames like Rhino and Frost. Uh, Nova uh, Nova is a little energy hungry already, so it definitely helps her out. Uh, so basically, uh, Systemic Override, this is awful. To post awful, 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 not worth it, awful. Umber Umberlance, maybe, if you don't mind the increased cooldown. Umberlance, maybe. It's kind of cool, but whatever. Uh, and then Energy Spike makes so when you pick up Energy Orbs, your allies also get energy. That's worth considering, uh, but probably only if you plan on playing with a specific group that wants you to have that. Uh, so, basically, whenever you get this tree, you never level Void Pulse. You max out Energy Overflow, and then you max out Void Pulse Mastery, and then you're done here. Uh, and you have completed it. I'm almost done maxing energy overflow. I'm a little ways away. Probably two, two days worth of cap, I suppose. Uh, and then I'll have that. 
that's basically what Zenric is uh, for your frames that don't have toggle abilities. You're basically just a huge influx of energy that lets you cast like crazy, uh, and it's very useful for that. Uh, otherwise, we have Vazarin. Uh, this is... This has more useful abilities than a lot of the other ones do. Uh, for this one, New Moon, this will make it so that you can activate Mending Tides and you get a certain number of instant revives, which is actually pretty useful if you are in a party where you are maybe, let's say, carrying newer players and they die a lot. Um, this can be really good for that. Uh, that is the use that I have for it whenever I don't want to waste time reviving and I just want to be able to like, activate this and have like some instant revives that I can just toss down. Uh, along with that, Polluted Waters also makes it so when you activate this, you can instantly res people, which is also pretty good. Uh, other than that, uh, Disciplined Approach is a huge waste of your time, uh, and Retaliation is kind of neat, but you don't want to be planning for being shot unless this mirror is like 50%. 2.5% uh, is going to get you literally nowhere. Uh, and then all of these are just... Uh, these are nothing. Yeah, the, the, none of these are... They don't do anything, basically. Just completely ignore all four of those. They're awful. Uh, and then Mending Shower is, like, literally just in service of getting Polluted Waters. So one level of that is fine. So New Moon, Polluted Waters, Mending, and then Mastery. Uh, and that's pretty much what you're going to get out of Vazarin. Very support focused. If you're like a hard carry and you don't really feel like you need anything from the other trees, uh, then that's kind of the best thing you could possibly go with. Uh, and then we've got Naraman. Uh, Naraman is one that if you're a melee player, you absolutely want to choose, I would say. Uh, Shadow Step being like the standout best here uh, with Deadly Intent coming up in second. Strategic Execution is literally just in service of getting Shadow Step and Deadly Intent. Um, getting more affinity for melee weapons is a shit passive that means fucking nothing and is garbage. Uh, however, whenever you get a critical hit with a melee weapon, turning invisible for 5 seconds, which I think upgrades to 10 seconds whenever this is fully maxed out, uh, is actually pretty good. This means that if you're like Loki and you've got that time where you're visible between your casts of invisibility, uh, if you're focusing on melee, you can get a critical and that will bridge the gap between your casts of invisibility, which can be very, very useful. Uh, I found that to be kind of the main use for Shadow Step. Obviously going invisible as frames like Excal and Wukong, which works with their exalted weaponry, uh, is very, very good. Definitely a really good passive uh, in a tree that where everything else sucks. Don't use any of this other shit. It's all awful. Like, no. Like, I mean, mastery, yes, for cooldown, but every, everything else is basically total garbage. Uh, and then Deadly Intent just makes it so your critical chance with melee weapons is more. Obviously, that's pretty good. Uh, any increase to that is fine, and you're going to want it to go with Shadow Step. Uh, and that's basically the entire Naraman tree. And so the very last thing we have is Matter Eye, which is hilariously straightforward. Uh, also, again, uh, all of this stuff, none of this stuff does, like, enough damage that you would ever care about it, really. Like, you're not doing anything that is, like, worth increasing your cooldown at all uh, with all of this shit. So basically, Mastery, and then Blazing, Searing, and Burning. Uh, basically, whenever you have all three of these maxed out, you're going to get a 40% increase to all of your physical damage types, which is incredibly good. If you just want a huge damage boost, here it is. This is the place to get your huge damage boost uh, on a lot of toggle frames that don't focus on melee. Uh, I'd absolutely suggest Matter Eye. Uh, that includes frames like Mesa, uh, Ivara, to a certain extent, Ivara already does a lot of damage. Um, hmm, who else? Um... Man, it, it's so varied that I'm having a hard time coming up with too specific of an example, because this is the one that you could kind of use on every frame, and having a raw increase in damage is just obviously very good. Uh, so Matter Eye is kind of the most general. If you play a lot of different archetypes of frames, that's probably the one you'd want to go with. Um, and then if you don't play channeled frames, Xenric is the one you definitely want to go with. And then under no circumstances should you pick Unairu, because that was my mistake. Uh, but yeah... That's the uh, breakdown of what the focuses do as of uh, the update that you should see in the top right corner there. Um, focus isn't great right now. Hopefully they make it better, but right now that's pretty much the short of what you should be choosing uh, out of these focuses. And 
I guess that's it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.